Welcome back to the Victorian Bar Room. Last season, we explored the cocktail and the idea that a cocktail is a specific subcategory of mixed drinks in the Victorian period, as opposed to sometimes today we say we're going out for cocktails, which mean, you know, any kind of mixed drink. So we did three different kinds that day. And one of the things that we talked about is there's not all, it's not always, it's a little bit subjective what is a plain cocktail and what's a fancy cocktail. It's kind of up to the to the writer or to the person mixing. Uh, so today I wanted to return to that and explore something that was specifically referred to as a fancy cocktail. So this comes from Leo Engel's book, Legendary uh, Bartending Writer, uh, from 1878. And this is the one that he specifically calls a fancy cocktail brandy cocktail. Now, most of the time on the show, I like to use original Victorian glassware. That's just a personal passion of mine. For this drink, I actually find just a regular champagne glass, like you might have at home, uh, to work really well. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a lemon wedge. We're just going to moisten the outside, the rim of that glass. And we're going to take a bowl of just plain white sugar and we're going to dip that in it and that lemon juice is going to cause that sugar to stick and make a nice crust around the edge of our glass. We're going to set that aside, take our shaker, Three dashes of plain syrup, and so plain syrup, this is just a simple syrup that you might have, you can find just readily today, so three good dashes of that. We're going to meet our Boker's Bitters again, the very popular Victorian cocktail bitters that have been reformulated. Uh, if you can't get a hold of them, if you don't have any, Angostura will make a worthy substitute. Just two or three. Now, two ounces of brandy. You know that part of my mission in life is to spread the word and help in any way I can with the revival of American apple brandy in the form that it was before it was unjustly stolen from us during those 13 terrible years of prohibition. So I use that stuff whenever I can. I love it, especially Alan Bishop's work at Spirits of French Lick, the Old Clifty Hoosier Apple Brandy. We drank it all though. And so, um, I've been getting a lot of questions about what's something a little more common that maybe I can find in the liquor store if that's not available in your area that might be good. Uh, and so we're going to use a cognac today. Cognac uh, is a French brandy. Uh, it is a great brandy that is was very popular during the Victorian period. And Pierre Ferrand here is pretty commonly available. This is the amber variety. They do have one that's called the 1840 and was specifically made to be like Victorian cognacs, and it is delightful. I love it. I don't know when we're going to be releasing this, but right now while we're filming it, it's February 2022, and we're having a few supply chain issues. So it wasn't available, but the amber, very full-bodied, elegant flavor um, of cognac that is readily available. I highly, like, highly recommend this. It stands out really well in the cocktail. So two ounces. If you don't have anything specific to measure with, that's four tablespoons. And then a dash or two of, they're calling it Curacao. To them, that was something like Grand Marnier. A couple of ice cubes. And we are going to stir this. Do not shake it. The flavor is just very nice and subtle and elegant. And I like to shake a cocktail, but when I try to shake this, it just brutalized it. So please definitely stir it. Enough to get everything nice, well combined, chilled down. And we are going to strain it. Strain it into our nice sugar encrusted glass. Felt like you've seen me peel a lemon enough on this show. Uh, so you can do this with a vegetable peeler. Try to get as constant of a shape as you can uh, and as much yellow and as little white as you can. And the first thing you're going to do is just express that over the top. 
get that essence to settle over it, and that's going to be what greets your nose as you slowly move it up to it. You know, my preference is to discard the lemon peel after that. I just like that subtleness just settled on top. You don't even necessarily see where it came from. But this one specifically has you garnishing with it. So Leo Engel wants us to just arrange it nice and elegant in there. And there's the nice scent of the lemon, the elegantness of the cognac, and... Mm. And it's just delightful. This is not this kind of cocktail is not the knee jerk thing I go to. I like spirits for what they are. Um, you know, I, I honestly, what we, we once we've done this work and all that, I don't usually make myself a fancy cocktail uh, in the evening. Uh, I, I like to just kind of have something plain and simple that I don't have to think a lot about. This is just a nice treat. That cognac just flows with everything very smoothly, very elegantly. But again. The Pierre Ferrand is is nicely full bodied, and that rim of sugar around the edge and that little bit of sweetness is just it's it's a nice indulgence, uh, you know. And the uh, the Victorians had had quite a sweet tooth, so so this is not surprising. So there you have it. This is a fancy brandy cocktail, not just a plain cocktail like we did last season from 1878 by Leo Engel. And I highly recommend it. It's it's not difficult. You do want to keep your proportions careful um, and treat everything kind of gingerly. Like I say, stir, don't shake. Uh, but it's a nice, elegant indulgence uh, from the Victorian period. So, thanks for being with us. Uh, if you have not already, please click the like and subscribe. That actually really helps us out uh, with what we're able to do on YouTube, what we're able to do for you. Uh, so we would really appreciate that if you would click the like and subscribe and stay with us. We are, we've got lots left to come uh, during season two. We're going to have a lot of fun. And until next time, here's to you.